This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this brand new episode of Realistified, the show in which I turn your drawings into realistic images using Photoshop. As always, if you want to send yours for a next episode, make sure to send it to realistified at bennyproductions.net. And then for now, let's get into the first one. This one was sent in by Bennett. Hi, here's my Realistified submission. I hope you like it. Thank you. I sure do. This actually reminds me of the older Realistified videos I did. And as you can tell, this whole video is kind of themed like those. So let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Photoshop. I'm gonna begin with dragging this snake texture kind of thing in here. I will put that right about here. And then right away, I'm gonna use some puppet warp and make sure that the shape goes nicely around the original shape. It is really uh, quite obvious. The thickness of it, I will take care of later, so don't worry. Just all the way to the back here, right until here, I think. This should, something like this should be fine for now. And then now using some liquify, I will make it a bit skinny here just like this. It's all pretty straightforward, I guess. We've been here before. <laughs> Obviously, we don't need this end bit right here. Now to give this some shape, some depth, some loveliness, let me just add some highlights up here and also some shadows later on. This obviously just needs to get some shape. So for now, this seems a pretty good way to do it. While I do this, let me just tell you something about why this video is completely restyled into the old way I used to do these videos. I feel like some of my videos, especially the Realistified videos, have just kind of lost their soul, I suppose. Back in the day, they just seemed much more passionate and I kind of feel like I lost that. So I thought, you know what, let's just make an episode exactly the way I used to do it, using the same graphics. Just for like a nostalgic effect. I'm a big simp for nostalgia, so there you have it. I get a ton of messages from people wanting to learn what I do, and honestly, I myself am not really a teacher, but I may have just found a perfect alternative. A word for today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a platform dedicated to learning and exploring about the stuff that you have an itching interest in. Whether that be Photoshop or design like me, or any other stuff like film, animation, illustration, music, photography, or career-focused topics like management and productivity. I personally have always been a fan of Aaron Draplin, he's a big inspiration of mine. He's got a bunch of different classes on Skillshare, but one in particular I really liked, his type customization class. I often do videos and projects where I need cool titles and logos, and his tips and tricks are always welcome in that front. I can highly recommend his classes, also because he's just a very fun person, honestly. And the same can be said about Daniel Scott, to which I actually talked a few times. As an Adobe certified instructor for Photoshop, he's got a thing or two to teach you about it. And on top of that, he covers web design, motion graphics, you name it. And good news, because the first thousand people to use the link down below will get a free month of Skillshare. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video and then now onto the drawings. See, this is already starting to get some shape now, these shadows. Basically the same thing, but on the lower end instead, because the light will be coming from above. This is, of course, a sea creature, and usually in the sea, the light does come from above, so it just, it simply makes sense. Now, this looks a bit strange, but I guess it always kind of does, so whatever, we'll just continue. Surprisingly, for the head, I will use an alligator head, because, um, why not? We can really just put it on there, and, um, and, uh, we, uh, we make it a bit yellow, and, um, well, that's pretty much it. Jokes aside, we only need the top jaw because the lower jaw is going to be something completely different. And then at the back, it has a kind of shape along with the rest of the body, kind of like this. So we can really nicely fade that out into that body. For now though, we don't need any of the lower jaw, so let's completely remove that. This is going to look a bit strange at first, but hopefully I will later be able to make this look quite, <laughs> quite nice. This is interesting. The position of the eye isn't identical, so let me just use the same eye again and just kind of Make that a bit narrower and put that on the right spot. Somewhere here, I think, isn't that far off. Well, that looks demonic. The snout is also a little bit more pointy, so let's make this one pointy as well to make sure that matches really perfectly. There you go, that's more like it. And then let's get that yellow tint in there, making sure that matches with the body. It's all pretty straightforward, really. Something like this isn't too bad. And for some consistency, let's add a little bit of a highlight on top of his jaw. Obviously, the body is lit from above as well, so it only makes sense. And of course, that same very thing with shadows as well. What a surprise. Wow. Just giving that whole thing some shape. That is starting to look pretty nice already. I'm gonna replace all these teeth later, so don't worry about those. Also, I can't forget about the eye because that's actually red, it seems. So let's simply go ahead and paint over it just like so. Really quite lovely. And a little bit brighter as well, maybe. Once again, I am making Hellspawn. 
that's what this is. He also has to stun off this black stuff around his eyes. Now, I'm not gonna do that too intensely because I feel like the yellow is kind of nice, but I do want to make it a bit darker, just like this. So it is clear that it's a bit of a different tint, at least. Here you go. Something like that should be absolutely fine. Then I suppose for the top of the lower jaw, uh, we can still use this crocodile right until the edge where the teeth are, I think. And under that, I have a pretty crazy idea. What if we use this bad boy? <laughs> we just have to use some warp, I guess, or maybe liquify. This looks a bit strange for now, but it'll make sense in just a sec. Let me first just copy all the yellow effects to the jaw to make sure that all kind of looks the same like this. And what this needs is really just a bunch of shadows like this to make sure the lighting matches all over. Um, pretty straightforward once again, but it's definitely necessary because this looks horrendous and inside of the mouth We probably should add some red because crocodiles don't have this but uh, it should you know It just looks nicer for the effect I'm already gonna make the background a little bit bluish so we can see what that sort of will look like in terms of <laughs> Color then now let's work on the black stripes. This should be fairly easy. Just kind of making uh, well a black stripe on <laughs> onto the scales it's Oh god. Honestly, why do I even explain stuff like this? The original stripes are obviously quite rough, but I'm just gonna do something that sort of looks like it in a more realistic way. Kind of going around the scales as well, just like this. I think this is actually pretty close. We also need these two fins right here, even though they're not super visible. Let's go and use this one for that. It's just a very simple, uh, fin and then we'll just gotta make sure it connects nicely to the body as always and at the very end of his tail he's got this anchor for whatever reason so let's uh, drag one in as well this one seems um, pretty nice let's drag it onto the exact right spot kind of like this the way it connects is gonna be a little bit different but really I don't think that matters too much. Not gonna lie, this is one of the weirder creatures I've done. Um, then for the tongue, let's see what we can use for that. I suppose we can just use part of a human tongue, like this from the side. It's... Ugh, tongues are disgusting. If you really start to think about kissing and that the, you just kind of smush two of these to get... Uh, uh. Using some liquify, I'm just trying to match the shape of the original drawing. I think something like this is fine. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Just kind of like this. It's a bit higher up, but I feel like that's a bit more appropriate. Now, this is where it's going to have to make a very sharp... <laughs> this, this looks so weird. A very sharp turn, I was going to say. Uh, something like this. Same story here. It's not going to be identical, but just something similar. I think that is pretty much close enough. Now let's make sure it's all nicely blended in there using some shadows and make sure it actually comes out of the mouth, of course. And some shadows at the bottom. Quite the same stuff, really. I feel like this is not too far off. As far as the teeth go, I feel like these aren't actually as bad as I thought. Maybe I just have to make them a different color, but the amount and size of teeth of the drawing is just a bit too insane, maybe? And to be fair, the whole idea of this series is making more realistic versions of the drawing, so I feel like we should be good. We'll just make them something like this. So a bit brighter, but still not too intense. It just pops a little bit more than what it was before. I like it. Then the only thing that remains are his hands, which are in quite an interesting position. I think I'm gonna use one of these claws. Not gonna lie, I feel like the position of the hands may just ruin the whole thing. So I'm not sure, should we, I mean, I feel we, I have to stay true to the drawing, but at the same time, I feel like this really just doesn't look right. Let me just do his right arm in just a little bit of a different position and see what that looks like. Maybe rather something like this is better. That's creepy as hell. And then to fill this up, we can kind of just use some textures like this one, for example, to make it appear a little bit more moist. <laughs> Dude, this actually looks really, really disgusting. And all we have to do is put this on luminosity and there you go. Then let's fade out the hand into that arm like this. Pretty good. See that really... That really isn't so bad. Now let's copy this onto the background and simply see, it just covers it up completely. That's actually just fine. That should be the creature part of this. As kind of a callback to one of the first episodes of Realistified, I will make this one uh, pretty similar to the aquatic snake. Uh, as I used to call it. Meaning this is obviously going to be underwater. Let's add some light rays first, but really make sure they're only visible in the corner here. They shouldn't be too intense, kind of like so. This could be a little bit more intensely blue. And then towards the bottom here, it should be just a lot darker mainly. As if this is really pretty deep into the ocean. Seems pretty cool. Then using some of these water overlays again, let's add the bubbles kind of thingies. Let's put this on screen and add a blue tint. Kind of like this. Ooh. We don't need these all over though. 
those so let's remove them from the bottom area something like this nice and subtle most of all and then really we just have to make sure the creature matches that underwater vibe obviously sadly this does mean it's going to be less vibrant but it will look a lot more convincing we just have to find that sweet spot and of course to really spice it up just like we used to i'm going to add a very sharp highlight on top because obviously the light from above is pretty bright so i'm going to just go all over this top area and i'll be right back with you i can even try making those same shadow effects i did back in the day as if you can clearly see this sunlight is being blocked by the creature itself i feel like this may just work it just has to be very subtle like this here you go that's lovely. And then let's add some final magic using a camera raw filter. And honestly, we should be pretty much done at that point. These are really just some final touches. It does always work though. And well, then I think this absolute monstrosity is finished. <laughs> I gotta say, it's really fun doing drawings like these again, it's been a while, and I quite like how this one turned out. Then the second for today, this was sent by Hayden. Hey Benny, I would love it if you can photoshop this squid. Well, I'll try my best, let's see what we can do. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Photoshop. Today we're gonna begin with an octopus for the head because that just makes sense. It kind of looks like an octopus. I found this one and I think the top part here can fit on there pretty well. Let's go and use some warp to make sure it fits exactly. Of course we only need the left side so let's erase all the other stuff. And then using this same image we just have to fill up the entire body area I suppose. Just like so. And we can even try using some liquify like this as well to really get that exact kind of shaping and curves if you will i'm just seconds in and it's already starting to look incredibly cursed i don't even know i'll just continue and see where it goes interesting now the tentacles let's begin trying using uh, this one let's kind of align it like so as you can tell mine is a <laughs> Mine is a little bit longer, but I suppose that's just a fun little extra detail then. It just extends further out. Nice. Then right away, I'm going to try getting the same kind of color in there. Essentially, it just has to become kind of yellowish orangey. I know how weird this looks, but just have a little faith, please. I'm just as baffled as you trust me. Then let's copy the same effects and then just like this we have to add all the tentacles and stuff but there's only two more so no worries. Last one right there and then see that is a masterpiece on its own. Now let's go and add some shadowing. Obviously this looks incredibly flat and boring so let's go ahead and make this look just a little bit more realistic by adding oh that's very dark by adding some very subtle and nice shadows. For your info, the light will be coming from above because I feel like this is an underwater creature. So, you know, um, there's that. Yeah, this is definitely slowly getting some shape. Now, of course, the exact opposite, some highlights to really bring out those, um, <laughs> well, highlights. <laughs> Once again, saying really useful, useful stuff, useful intel. Just a very nice and bright highlights all over the top areas of the octopus. Now obviously the original is blue so let's go ahead and add some uh, some blue to it. There you go. That is hideous. It's not even blue. Let's just kind of see if something like this works. Yeah I kind of like something like this. Not so bad. However the tentacles themselves are a bit more this ocean kind of color so let's go with that. Let's go grab this color and simply paint over the ends here. Ooh, Very nice that is. Okay that's pretty clean. I like it. Now there is of course yet another color the pink kind of spots it has. So let's go and see where all of these pink spots go and then let's simply begin painting once again kind of like this first I'll just do a rough outline and then later I will make them look just a little bit more stylized and nice just like these and the ones on his face or head as well and then manually I'm gonna go in and make sure the edges look a bit nicer as if this is really part of the scales so to speak even though it makes no sense for one of these to have scales but somehow this one does besides the original image was an octopus so it's fine well then <laughs> this looks interesting it looks interesting let's go and work on his eye for just a sec i have this beautiful eyeball so let's make sure it aligns with the original something like this shouldn't be too bad we however do not need the actual iris so let <laughs> well there you have it then for that kind of flesh around it i thought maybe this image could work for that it's a bit um disgusting but it doesn't matter i think that kind of bit right there would actually be pretty good and then let us use some liquify to really make sure 
kind of goes nicely around that eye and it looks disgusting. Ah. It's pretty good though, not gonna lie. So now we can just kind of paint around the eye area and see if that works at all. This looks um, really... Um, well, I keep coming back to interesting. This looks interesting. Ooh, and the edges we can make blue so that it really nicely fades into the skin. That is very cool. Right now, I am really starting to question what the hell it actually is I am making. But you know what? It's fine. Once again, we'll see where it goes. This absolute abomination. <laughs> Let's bring some of that roundness into the eyeball itself, just like this, making the edges a little bit darker. And we just need these vertical shapes inside and we should be good. I mean, good is kind of um, subjective at this point, but it doesn't matter. Let's use some bevel and emboss on the outer bevel to kind of create this disgusting and I mean truly disgusting edge on it. You just make it even worse than it already was. And I know the original doesn't have this, but what if we add a little bit of light inside of there as if it actually lights up. To make the tiny tentacles below him, I feel like a jellyfish could actually work. And this one already has kind of the same color. So what if we just do... Ooh. I actually think this is a great choice. I mean, it's obviously quite different from the drawing, but I do think this actually looks pretty... Oh no, that's actually weird. No, no, let's keep it on one side only. See, just like this. Maybe that could actually be... Dude, that is... Ugh, that's really... I mean, it's good, but it's also... Ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Then on top here for these spikes, let me just use this claw here and position them all in the right spot. Really nothing too crazy, just like this. For these giant kind of wing thingies, let's first trace the shape the way we used to do it back in the day to get some of that extra nostalgia going. And to those, let's already add some shadows to just have that done, I guess. Afterwards, we can add a texture and then we should be pretty much good for the base of the wings, kind of, so to speak. Just like this, giving it some shape. Definitely one of my favorite things to do. I mean, you can probably tell, like, this is... Uh, so much fun. Let's also add the same texture inside to make sure it really flows over into the body quite nicely. And then for the actual wings themselves, I'm gonna use this bat, because why not? This is going to require a ton of liquify though, so let's just kind of get this started. Not identical, but definitely close enough. Then let's remove the stuff we don't need and go and add some color. We can really quite easily just find that same blue tint, kind of like this. Yes, that is... A bit strange, but we can work with it. And then where it connects, let's add a little bit of a very subtle ambient shadow, just like this. The ambient occlusion, if you will, to make sure it really looks like these connect. Let's just go and do the other one first. Same thing again, some liquify. Well, there you go. That I feel like is pretty much the base of this. So now let's go and put him in a very cool environment. I put this guy in a new document and now let's use this C backdrop as the backdrop. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes I get so tired of myself. I want to have some of these corals at the bottom here, so let's kind of see if this works. I feel like, I mean, this is nice and colorful, right? And then let's fade that out into the original image, like this. I don't want to see this diver either, kind of lame. There you go, that is pretty good. And in general, up here, I want it to be very, very bright. And at the bottom, rather dark and creepy, you know what I mean? Just kind of like this. That's more like it. We can even use one of these and then set that to screen to get those lovely light rays in there as well. Ooh, there you go. Yes. Now, as for our octopus, let's put him back in there and let's begin blending him in there, kind of. It does need a bunch of work. Obviously, the tones of this image are a lot different as well. We're definitely gonna have to do some shadowing on here as well to just really make sure the lighting matches and just fits. The further it goes down, the darker it gets, of course. Here you go. That's starting to look like something. These tentacles also have to be a little bit darker, like this. And then since the light from above is still pretty bright, we can re-add this same highlight kind of thing, only on the very high up areas, so to speak, if that makes sense. Just kind of like this to make sure that lighting is nicely consistent. We love consistency, don't we? Okay, so I have a pretty wild idea and I'm not sure if it's gonna work. What if we make some of these purple spots light up? Kind of like this, where each one has this bright kind of little twink. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> nope. No, never mind that. That is just horrendous. We can try the eye, however. What if that's kind of glowy? Let's add a little bit of a colored glow around it like this because it's underwater, so it's very hazy and stuff. There you go. 
Is that nice? Creepy, that's for sure. Well, either way, we can definitely add some glow around the brighter edges to make sure it really has that underwater hazy kind of effect, kind of vibe. This always seems to really help with that. And you know the drill, just like the old days, we're gonna need some of these underwater particles. Put those on screen and put them maybe just on top there only. We definitely wanna have that teal color in there as well, just like that. And just a little bit on the bottom as well, just right here. Yeah, that's definitely getting that underwater look for sure. Now I am dead curious what this looks like with a camera raw filter, so let's go and try and see what we can do in here. We can definitely make it look a little bit more crisp, although maybe underwater we should actually do the opposite. I don't know, I guess both is kind of nice. This is really vague and soft, and this is really sharp. Mm. You can also make it very deep blue, kind of like, like this. You know what, I think that's not actually so bad. Well, then I guess this one is pretty much finished. This one turned out surprisingly cool. I was a bit skeptical about this one. Then the last drawing for today, the speed art segment. This one was sent by Madison. Just a little TV bug crap thingy for the series. Thank you very much. A rather simple one, nice for a change. So let's get into it one last time.
there you go. What fun to do it like this once again. It's been quite a while and it's it's nostalgic but refreshing at the same time. These are the drawings we've done today and again if you want to see yours in a potential next episode be sure to send it to realistified at bennyproductions.net. Don't forget to check out Skillshare down below and then I guess for today that's it. If you like this video make very sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell not to miss a single video and then I hope I'll see you in the next one.